So far, we've been using page objects simply to store element references. In this video, we'll look at defining custom commands in our objects, similar to how the add command utility works, which we looked at in the previous module. In our review.js file, we defined a custom command called submit review. In it, we set the value on two input fields, then submitted the form. Our page object command will look very familiar. First, we need to create a new file to host it. We'll follow the page naming convention, calling our file reviewform.page.js. Inside of it, we'll create a review form class. Then we'll export a new review form as the return value from the file. We'll fill out three properties defining elements for our form, email input, and review input. This is the same step we took in the previous video. As a review, we use the get keyword, name our property, then use the dollar sign function to return the specific element on the page we want to reference. With those properties defined, let's move on to the purpose of this video. I'll create a new property named submit. It will be used as a regular function, so we won't use the get keyword. Because we're using ES6 classes, we don't need the function keyword either. We're defining this function inside of a class, so it automatically defines it as a function when we do so. Cutting out the parameters and contents of the submit review custom command, we'll move them over to our page object. After pasting that in, we'll update our set value commands to use our defined element references. Note the usage of this in our commands. This refers to the review form class we're inside of, pointing to the element properties of it. We now have a custom command defined inside our page object. We didn't use the add command utility as we only want this function to be part of the review form object, not the browser object. We'll clean up the leftover bits from our review file, then add a require statement to the top of it, pulling in our new page object. Finally, we'll update the submit form browser calls to use the function we just defined. Our reference to the function is similar to how we get our page object elements, except we'll use the parentheses to call the function and run it. Our assertions stay as they are. We don't move them inside of the custom function as they don't really belong there. Assertions should live inside of your test, leaving your page objects as a simple abstract representation of the page. That's really all there is to custom functions. They work almost the same as the add command utility, except you attach them to a class and not the browser object. While we're in here, let's update the remainder of our tests to use our newly created page object. We'll start by defining a few more elements. Many tests in here relate to the error messages shown when inputting incorrect data. Therefore, we'll define a form error, email error, and review error property on our page object. We'll use the text reference for our element selector. Now we need to update our reference to these error elements. A few find and replaces will do the trick. There are two more places we could make an update to use page objects. The first, where we're checking the focus on elements, would be a great fit. Unfortunately, there's an issue right now with sync mode and the has focus command, so it doesn't work as expected. I'll leave this alone for now. Our last test is its own special snowflake. Since we're using dynamic data and inserting new elements inside of our page, we can't rely on the same static selectors we've been looking at. Let's ignore this test as well for now. That's it for the updates. Let's now test out our tests. Again, we had no real functional changes, just some behind the scenes things. Our test should pass as before. Our test passed still and our updated page object works as expected. Things are looking better, but we still have this last test. It would be nice if we could hide this nasty nth of type selector in a cleaner page object, but it's tricky with how the value of it shifts each time through the loop. Instead of relying on a static selector like we've done so far, we're going to jump into defining page objects on the fly. That's coming up in the next video.